Let's talk about CISSP maintenance. I know that there are a lot of misconceptions about what it means to maintain the CISSP. I heard questions like, um, well, I was going to take the CISSP, but I know that you have to invest a lot of time and money and energy in maintaining it. Mm, not true. Or I heard from quite a few people, yes, but I don't really feel like doing this exam again and again. Well, I don't either. That's why I haven't taken it in 10 years. Nor will I have to, as long as I keep my certification in good standing. So let's explain what it means to keep your certification. So there are three things you have to maintain in order to stay an IC2 member in good standing. One is the code of ethics. As long as you don't have any code of ethics violations, there's no reason for you to be concerned about your CISSP. That is one thing. So as long as you stay an honest and ethical person, not doing anything that is out of bounds, I won't worry about it. The second thing is, again, pretty simple, is paying the annual maintenance fees. As of 2024, the annual maintenance fees are $135 per member per year. I want to explain in a second what are the AMFs and why should you pay them. So first of all, to, comp to have a certification like CISSP, globally recognized and continue to be regarded as the best of breed gold standard takes a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of energy, a lot of people. It's not enough to create a great certification exam, which we did. You have to also maintain it. Think about it, the CSSP is 30 years old. However, every three years, the entire CBK is being reviewed rewritten, updated, according to what's going on in cybersecurity right now. This takes time and money. We also offer a lot of other benefits to our members, including chapter memberships, pro additional programs, additional certifications, a lot of advocacy work that a lot of people don't notice and don't understand the meaning of. So for example, working with governments all over the world to make sure that certifications like the CISSPs are well regarded and are considered as an equivalent of a degree in some cases, sometimes even a master's, are recognized by governments for government uh, workers so these are all things that requires time and money and energy and that's part of the things that the AMFs covers. Last but not least CPEs. That's the one thing that I heard from many professionals that they are worried about. So what are CPEs and why shouldn't you worry about it? CPEs stands for continual points of education. Basically it's showing that you continue to learn and grow and evolve in this profession. You have to, in order to maintain the CISSP, you have to collect 120 CPE credits over a period of three years. Recommended is to get at least 40 per year or a minimum of 30 per, per year so you don't find yourself in your last year of the cycle because each CISSP certification has a cycle of three years. You don't want to find yourself in the last year suddenly struggling to get 120 CPEs. And I know that a lot of people are very concerned with how will they find time to get CPEs and how will they report them, etc. So I'm here to tell you that it is so much easier than you think. If you're a cybersecurity professional, I'm guessing you spend a few hours each week, maybe even each day if you're like me, in learning new things in reading blogs, in attending webinars, in going to conferences, in researching new vulnerabilities or new attack groups or anything else that you are interested in. All of these activities can be considered CPEs. For example, if you attend a two days conference, that's two days of CPEs. Potentially it could be up to 16 CPEs if it's eight hours a day. If you listen to a podcast, or maybe like me, you have your own podcast. Great, research time, listening time, all of that, these are CPEs. If you create something new, if you have a blog, that is CPEs. It's only a matter of 
being aware that this is what what's required and making sure that you have the list and you have all the requirements filled in. One of the best ways in my eyes to get CPEs in a consistent way is to jo join one of the ISC2 chapters worldwide. Our, the chapters program has been around for over 10 years now. We have chapters in each and every continent. Some chapters are very active. They offer weekly, some of them, meetings or webinars or podcasts or networking opportunities. Others are less active, but still have a lot of value to add. If you join those chapters, you get a lot of CPEs opportunities. Look for at the ISC2 mailing list. You get loads of opportunities there, like joining ta think tanks, task forces, webinars, conferences, etc. So really, don't worry about the CPEs. So to conclude, how do you maintain your, CP your CISSP good standing? One, maintain your code of ethics. Hopefully, that will never be an issue to anyone listening to me right now. Two, pay your annual maintenance fees, $135. Three, make sure you have your CPEs, you, met, you put in your credits via the ISC2 membership portal, and that's it. You will never have to take the CSSB exam. You will stand, stay a member in good standing, and who knows where the certification can take you next. <laughs>